Thanks for listening to the Dallas Design Sprints podcast. I'm Robert Scrobe. Today's show is featuring Melvin Thamby. He's a creative director and design sprint facilitator hailing from Houston, Texas. On the show, we get into his six-year tenure as a creative director at Rapid Value, how his entire family values, appreciates, and practices art and design, and how that's led to his research and development of an application that teaches young kids the value of art. We'll also cover some other endeavors he's planning on pursuing all throughout 2019, and I shamelessly self-promote the Global Virtual Design Sprint at the end of the episode. Not intentionally, it just came up in conversation. Really. Really. Hope you enjoy the show, and we'll see you soon. Melvin, you are the Creative Director and Design Sprint Facilitator there in Houston for Rapid Value Solutions? Yeah. Is this your own company or is this a, uh, a business down in Houston that you're working for? So I'm actually working for one company called Rapid Valley Solutions and it's based out of Pleasanton, California and we have offices around, uh, around the world, like 10 offices altogether. We have offices in US, UK and India and I work for a customer here. It's a big data management company. So where I work for their product branding and marketing. So uh, right now I'm working for a customer here. But you've been doing this a long time. You've been at this company for quite a while. So I imagine it's just not been this client, but it's been other clients. Yeah, we have a lot of other clients as well. And I manage a team in India. We have around 10 member team in India. And we have other projects as well. We are into different IoT, uh, omnichannel cloud technology based projects. Whenever you hire new people into Rapid Value Solutions as employees, do you find that they, bec- they come to the table with uh, in-depth knowledge of IoT and other technologies, new technologies that clients are looking for? Yeah, most of the people join with that intention to learn or expand their career from uh, Rapid Value by understanding the latest trends happening around these particular technologies. But there are some people uh, who are more enthusiastic towards learning this stuff and they join the company. Uh, and if you see that passion, then we will definitely hire them. And I hire uh, most of the designers here. So they are not more interested in technology, but more than they are interested in the latest design trends that we follow and the process that we follow here. What do you enjoy the most about being a creative director? So being a creative director, uh, I'm having a fine arts background. I studied Bachelor of Fine Arts back in India, and I was planning to join an advertising company, but uh, later I ended up in joining an IT company. And I thought like uh, having this background and I have this advertising thing in my blood. So I thought like I can explore all the talent that I have in terms of branding, visual design, as well as UX, UI, and everything. So being a creative director is fun, and it's a kind of uh, sharing the experiences and knowledge to the others and managing the team and reviewing their work and uh, sharing the knowledge with the rest of the world. So are you the type of creative director that is both hands and brains, meaning you get into the weeds and do the design as well as manage others around their engagements and how they do their work yeah more than managing that's what i do the most because i i love to do my hands-on work on all projects and i still do that and uh, if i have a a big project there then i will delegate that to my uh, team and they also handle their projects independently i rarely manage them instead i used to work with them so that is a work culture that we follow in Rapid Value. And we form as a brand called Rapid Gems. And we work under that brand where everyone is handling each one's project and everyone is responsible for doing that stuff. So more than managing, that's what I do the most. If you were to ask some of your employees, or let's say I went and asked some of your employees about management style and what you're all about, what would they tell me? They would tell. <laughs> they say he's amazing. I've never worked with anyone so grand. Well, what would they say? They will say like I'm a crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so I will keep on telling them to improve their quality, and sometimes my quality won't be 
might not be their quality level so they might think in a different sense and they will argue with me they used to fight with me and they once i see valid points i agree with them and that's how we work <laughs> many times so but uh, most of the designers love my style of doing things and they follow what i say and they used to give more ideas to me as well and we work as a team and we fight as a team so there's the healthy you're saying there's a healthy amount of collaboration going on within the team exactly yeah that's how and we work do you usually find good ideas or new ideas from the people you work with most of the ideas that i got from is from my team and uh, from my team only like uh, i used to hire freshers and interns as well and they love to work 24 hours and they come up with some fresh ideas where we work together we collaborate each other and we will make it a big idea from there so all the ideas is coming from the team only so yeah and we respect ideas from others so how do design sprints kind of fit into this model of collaboration and and exploring each other's ideas has the design sprint process been experimented with or is there a direct application to your work with design sprints what's going on uh, behind closed doors with that process yeah that's a good question actually we were thinking about implementing design sprint inside our organization and we uh, thought about it and i discussed with my team then uh, later i figured out how to do it remotely because most of the team are there in india and i am here and to execute to a hundred percentage per, uh, perfection, it's a bit tough. So then I heard about your virtual sprint program and I was so fascinated with it and I was excited to be a part of it. But for some reasons, uh, I was not able to join it. Some personal reasons I was not able to join it last time. So this year, what I'm thinking is I'm working with you closely on that virtual design sprint and to experiment the remote working culture so that I can share that with my team there. So I hope it will make a huge difference. We try to do that in an internal project, but this remote design sprint process, I'm still uh, learning stuff and I'm researching it on internet. But I think once I joined the visual design sprint uh, initiative that uh, you bring. So I think when I join there and when I collaborate with other designers and around the world, I can learn more how to execute in a better way. It's worth noting, and for the April event that we're both referring to as the Global Virtual Design Sprint, this is the official one. The November one was a pilot. But for this particular one, and this may apply to your situation, we're looking to partner with different businesses and charities to do a more involved engagement. So for in your situation, let's say that you wanted to test the waters or really uh, use best practices to potentially have your team in India work with some with your team in Houston using the virtual design sprint event as a catalyst to, to kind of explore that. Yeah, that sounds a good idea. I can include my team as well. Yeah. With the idea that after everything's all said and done, your entire team has gone through the process both pre-sprint, during the sprint, and after the sprint, and figured out what works for your work culture what mm-hmm. seems to make sense in terms of process, and then following up later on to see if there's some standards that could be put into place, some uh, processes that could be adopted that make sense, but keeping the control within rapid value to make those determinations based on what makes sense for the business. Got it, yeah. We would like to part of it, yeah. Let's switch gears and talk about something that I'm really interested in, that you have been diligently working on. Why don't you tell everyone kind of the background about this, uh, why you decided to go to start working on it and where you're eventually gonna be taking it this year. Yeah, last year I started uh, my personal project that is called LIL. It's an app app for kids and put that as a blog in Medium and a lot of people give great feedback about about it so i was just experimenting whether this is a good idea uh, to pursue more and uh, the more feedback that i got i thought like i need to do it and i started do, uh, working on it so right now it's in a research phase so the idea behind that app is to improve the creative quotient in the children so the mentors will be the professionals working in the 
working in design field and art field and it's going to be like a collaboration with the uh, professionals and the kids and parents will be involved in some activities so they will also understand how this is going to work and they will also experience the learning of design and i think uh, design should be applied from the childhood itself so that he can be a doctor he can be an engineer in future but if he has that visualization skills it will help him in bringing out better ideas in a better way that's what i think so i am not happy with the current syllabus how the schools and other uh, places where children are learning art and design so i think the professionals who is working in some big brands like adobe facebook apple if they can come down and if they can teach the children and uh, then if it can be run through one app with a very small subscription like so then i think it will create a lot of a big revolution in the field of uh, art and design and i hope this will work out this uh, it's going to work out this year and i am connecting with i am collaborating with a lot of parents and designers and artists around the world i'm talking to them and i'm getting their feedback and i not on all the challenges up front so that they will also give some ideas there so i am collecting all the details now before stepping into uh, designing a single screen and i would love to do a design sprint on it as well so i wish if i can do a pilot project on your visual sprint uh, project this time so i'm looking forward for it yeah i think it'll happen i think yeah. we were close in november we just didn't have the enough people to kind of come together on that project i have no doubt that in april we'll get it done awesome curious to know when you were first talking to people and parents artists about the app did you also look at the marketplace to see what was available for parents and potentially you know school teachers and other folks that would use this application that you're talking about was there anything in the market that spoke to what you were doing or did you find you had sort of a unique view on teaching young kids and toddlers about the value of art yeah there are there are tons of uh, art and design apps available uh, craft apps are available there but what i'm looking for is an app completely dedicated to designing and art for children for example a 5 year kid can understand how to create a logo or how to create a wireframe so if he has some idea if he can do some wireframes or something like that if he has some project idea he can do it for example if i can teach a 8 year old kid to design something in photoshop or in sketch that should be great we don't know what they will make out of it so that is where i'm looking into and i would to uh, i would like to introduce van gogh and the famous artists famous designers in a simple way uh, which a kid can digest because we don't need to talk uh, more about the biography instead we can talk about uh, the work style the pattern uh, that that artist used and how he is how he became famous and all those stuff that's where we are, i'm thinking about now and the challenge here is finding the proper syllabus and introducing mentors here and the mentors will be busy people uh, if you are planning to bring mentors from big brands then they might be too busy so uh, the idea that i need to uh, crack here is how to make a syllabus where they can spend at least 30 minutes and they can come up with a study material for the kids so if i can bring a template or something like that some easy method there then i think it will be an unique app do you feel you need to go through some reps meaning you need to test the prototype or what you're going to be going to create with your intended audience to really see some tangible results to move forward with yeah exactly yeah before starting the development i should do a lot of prototypes and i need to get valid validation on that What do you have planned in terms of that validation? Are you waiting till after you get done with your design plan design sprint for this or are you doing any sort of testing right now with some of your initial concepts? So right now I'm uh, meeting one on one on one with parents and artists and I'm explaining the idea and I'm just grabbing their thoughts on 
on it but once i do the design sprint i will have some screens up front and i will have some uh, high level flow chart so that i can navigate the user uh, showing that and i am planning to do some paid ux survey or something like that so that i'll get more insights and that's what i'm thinking since we're both here in texas i would recommend reaching out to the acton academy it's a c t o n academy mm -hmm. uh, by extension my son goes to the humanist academy here in irving and they kind of approach education with a socratic method where it's more asking questions exploring not really telling uh not really giving kids the answers but they are very open to alternative ways of teaching kids and exploring different methods of going about it it could potentially have a conversation or or some traction with that organization especially with what they they tend to do yeah yeah so i consider this as a non-profit uh project right now and i would i want this to implement in schools and everywhere so that they can uh, so even the school teachers can also learn from the professionals right so it's going to be like a win-win situation for everyone and mm -hmm. i want to uh, boom the design and art industry a lot <laughs> and what's the proper name for the app so i name it like lil yeah so, just okay. lil yeah so the first letter l stands for the parent the i stands for the kid and the third l stands for the medes got it okay yeah. So this idea came to my mind when, um, uh, so my daughter, she's studying in fourth grade right now. So she used to draw some pictures. And once she saw my picture, uh, my drawing, where I put my signature there, and she told like, oh, I need, I also want one logo. And uh, she didn't ask uh, like a logo. She told like, okay, I want some representation of my name something like yours to be there. Then I told her like, oh, it's called logo. And then she asked what is logo. So I spent uh, one hour with her, like explaining what is logo, how, how it should be, and what is a minimal form to bring a logo and all those stuff. And I asked her to create her own logo. And uh, so she asked me how to create a logo. And I, I told her like something related to your work style and what you love the most and all those things. So she kept, uh, she started scribbling on paper and she put her first name she, her name is teresa so she put her first name first letter t and she was she told like okay she loves nature a lot so she started drawing tree and she told like i love green color a lot and from then she started scribbling a lot of sketches and then she come up with a simple logo and it's like a t with a leaf uh, and the leaf color is green and i then i told her like okay you can create this in uh, ipad so i introduced illustrator uh, app uh, in ipad and she drew there and she got a vector logo so it's like only 3 hours so within 3 hours she was able to create a logo for her own and she started putting that in the in all her drawings from that day onwards so i was just thinking uh, if we can teach this kind of small, small things to children, so they will understand the value of design in a better way before they become 18 or 19 years old. Your family has a history with art. Your wife does a lot of digital illustrations and painting. She's a professional artist. So it runs in the family pretty much, no? Yeah, so we both are from fine arts background. She will uh, do a lot of paintings and she's a state award holder. And she conducted two exhibitions in U.S., both in Fort Worth uh, Art Gallery. And she got one award also. So, yeah, we talk and do a lot of art at home. Yeah, it runs in the family. So was there an outlet for that when you were in South India a while back? Or did, have you always, for you yourself, have you always had a, a liking to art and the application of it? Yeah, I love art a lot and I studied applied art, uh, which is advertising. And, uh, but in our college, music and painting, sculpture, everything was there. So I used to see a lot of art exhibitions. And after our marriage, she teach me a lot about uh, uh, master's paintings and all those stuff. So we used to go to different art galleries and uh, it became our passion. And 
at the age of 30 i realized okay i need to bring back my art uh, background and i started drawing and i thought like in my team some designers are there who are good in art and i thought to do an art exhibition there in india so uh, inside our company our ceo rajesh approved to do an art exhibition and he helped a lot to do that so i associated with the engineers and the designers who are interested in art and we conducted one art exhibition there and most of the point paintings got sold and we we conducted art camp at home and it was like a fine arts atmosphere for a long time before i come to us so yeah i, I i'm always passionate towards art so when i'm not doing any design i i might be do, uh, drawing something in paper or in ipad I can imagine an evening in your household where you have your daughter working on logos, you have your wife working on oil painting, and you're working on um, a number of different creations. It's almost as if the, the house may go silent at one point, and all you can hear is the application of a pencil or a brush, or maybe <laughs> even like the ding of a microwave if somebody had popcorn, but there's, there's a little bit of back and forth, but there's a lot of creation going on. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there is a lot of creative buzz inside our home. <laughs> now, the question is, is does everybody stay up late because they want to finish what they're doing? Or do you pre are, you pretty, uh, are you pretty strict on when everyone has to kind of get to bed and, and head out? Or are you just creating in the middle, till the middle of the night? Uh, yeah, because we all are into art and design. The problem is there is no time limit. So sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes my kid will jump from the bread and she'll say like, oh, I have some one idea that uh, can be, can I uh, talk to you? Then she will talk, start talking about it and we will do that as a project together and all this stuff happens all the time. <laughs> so my kid, for in, in contrast, has a love of computers and loves uh -huh. to achieve. He loves to compete. He loves to get things done. So if you're talking about a child staying up very late, my son loves Khan Academy. In fact, last night or two nights ago, he finished the entire second grade math series in an entire sitting, like two and a half hours. Wow. And he, and he went to 39% last night before he got too frustrated and was super tired and needed to go to sleep. But I imagine that if your daughter gets involved with art and really gets into something, I can imagine it being, okay, we're all starving. What are we going to eat? And everyone makes pancakes at 1130 at night or something <laughs> to kind of like curb the hunger before people go to sleep yeah yeah <laughs> it happens it happens all the day <laughs> so what do you have looking forward to look forward to in 2019 it's uh the beginning of the year uh, i know myself i have a ton of things i want to achieve but you specifically i um, we've gone through a few of them you have the little app that you're going to be doing more and more putting more and more time into you have your uh work over at uh rapid value solutions yeah, your wife's going to be doing a business where she's going to be teaching people art. Yeah, how are you going to be promoting and broadcasting your progress on all of these? So uh, there are some other projects also in pipeline. I have a uh, interview series called Abstracts where I interview uh, some good artists and designers around the world, and I put that in Medium and it's published in Musli and Prototyper and all. So. I'm going to continue that as well. And moreover, uh, that interview series, what I'm planning is I will continue working on some good projects for uh, Rapid Value and we are planning to expand the team in Houston soon. Uh, so I need to spend some time on it. And the uh, I used to post our progress uh, and everything in social media and in Medium where we connect with the rest of the world. So that's where we show our uh, progress yeah before our marriage we started a brand called m and 10 so that was a family brand where we put our works and later we thought about conducting exhibitions and my wife conducted one group exhibition in india under that brand and now we are thinking about expanding that to a good business and uh, my wife is going to rent that business and she is going to teach students uh, on art and digital design and basics of design. She's a good designer as well. She knows Photoshop, Illustrator and all the stuff. So she's gonna teach all those things to ladies and children and adults. 
So that, and it's M N N, right? E M M N E N N. It's the art yeah. studio component. What about Rapid Gems, the design so, studio for that? Yeah. So Rapid Gems is the design studio of Rapid Value. Uh, we brand it like uh, Rapid Gems, and now that is the uh, top influential brand in uh, Dribble in Dallas area. So we have an office in Dallas as well. So <clears throat> we are planning to expand that team in Houston too. We are thinking about putting a lot of case studies. Uh, we are going to refine. Uh, we, we're going to revamp the complete website, and those things are in progress. So we are working on it right now. The complete the entire team is working on it. Outstanding. Yeah. So if we're uh, if we're both talking uh, at this time in 2020, January 2020, which I can't believe I'm saying 2020 because it sounds so bizarre that we're that far <laughs> into the future. When you look back on this year, what are some of the major achievements that you would love to see happen? Well, how would you like to see some of the things that you're working on progress? Yeah. So the next year, you can see Edmonton as a complete design and art studio run by my wife. And uh, we'll be having a lot of students. And you might have see a 60% progress in Lil app that I can guarantee. I'm not saying 100% because... It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I need to get the syllabus right. That is the main core thing. So for that, I need to collaborate and research and study a lot. So, but I can promise a 60 percentage promise there. And most probably, uh, I will do a painting exhibition as well. And I'm working on one more idea. It's called a, it's a weather app. I'm working with one of my friends. So that is in progress. Most probably, I can... Uh, share the link with you in app store next time and uh, i can share the picture of my team in houston yeah i'd love to see those in fact i hope so yeah <laughs> one thing you need to do after we get done talking today is to make sure that you send me in an email uh-huh. uh, all of the different links and references to the things we've talked about like m m&m and rapid gems uh, probably some links to some of the stuff you're doing, Rapid Value, the little app. I know that in your LinkedIn profile, you have a number of links to materials that you've created in support of that that endeavor. So I want to make sure that people can easily find that if, when they go back to the show notes of the, of the podcast. Sure, sure, definitely. Uh, I would like to know, uh, know more about Visual Design Sprint that you conduct there, that you're going to conduct on April. Oh, on the, on, in April, the Virtual Design yeah. Sprint. So, yeah, yeah. So the virtual design sprint that's going to happen this April Mm -hmm. is essentially going to be a month long affair. So it's not going to be just a single week. It's going to encompass four straight weeks of design sprint madness, (laughs) for lack of a better term. Um, And I'm not saying that we're going to have a four week design sprint. The idea is, is that we're reserving these four weeks so that say you're busy the first two weeks of April, you're out on vacation, you take an extended spring break, whatever the, the situation may be. You still have week three and four to plan maybe some alignment uh, meetings that the week previous, that, that third week. And on the fourth week, you do the actual three to four day sprint. Mm-hmm. We're being a bit more flexible so that people who have different schedules and conflicts can come together and come around a problem or an idea that they really like. Now, Ooh. this time around, beyond the extended month, we're reaching out to charities, nonprofits, businesses. We're kind of partnering with different organizations to use the virtual design sprint as a vehicle to test the waters with virtual design sprints if they've never done them, or to, by extension, test what they already done and benefit a charity that is, is uh, associated with a business, or work with people that have never done the design sprint process before and have them go through a standard four to five day design sprint with a, a seasoned facilitator and a co-facilitator that where others can learn from the process, especially those that have just gotten certifications, but have mm-hmm. never really applied what they've learned in, in a real time environment. Because sometimes that's hard for people that, are, that have just gone through the process and have never been able to, to do the you know, to do a sprint in the first place. Yeah. So yeah. that's generally it. And we, we did a live broadcast yesterday when we worked on the sign up forms and type form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we, we imagine that we're going to do a lot of signups in January and mid February. We'll start bringing everyone together to choose which, which challenge or which event they want to be part of. And then from then it's going to be empowering people to become facilitators, organize their events, 
do a lot of marketing and self social promotion. But the whole point of all this is, is really to elevate facilitators and professionals and businesses that do design sprints and really benefit the greater community at large. Show how this process is a motivating driver to better design, better outcomes, and ultimately happiness for a lot of different people. I'll naturally yeah. benefit from the notion that the brand that I represent, the professional brand I have, will kind of ride that wave if it works. But I have a real sincere desire to take people that don't have an outlet maybe locally for design sprints and giving them the opportunity to showcase what they can do. That's probably the, the, the main thing that's driving me to kind of push for this, this event that's happening in April. Yeah, sounds sense. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I so hope I, uh, most probably uh, on 2020, I can see a design sprint co-working space under your brand. <laughs> Yeah. And I think if it continues to trend in the way it does, uh-huh. I, I think it will be less about proving that the design sprint works. Yep, yep. It's going to be more about how designs, the design sprint process is used, broken apart, taken piecemeal, applied to different situations and coalescing around best practices and showcasing how in conjunction with other methods, like re- most recently, John Vuitton and uh, Design Sprint Academy posted Design Sprint 3.0 and their variation on problem framing and really understanding the problem before you do the design sprint. That's going to continue to evolve to where the standard is going to be put put out there by a whole bunch of different people. And people can just pick and choose what seems to matter for them. It'll become less of a specialized process and it will become more of a, I wouldn't say commodity, but it'll be more standard. And exactly. it'll start becoming... Uh, a practice I think that will be be considered the the starting point for really understanding opportunity and especially with growth design the the, the next thing I'm looking forward to is to having a growth designer take a look at this and orient the activities towards accelerated growth for a startup and how that could basically be leveraged for what they concentrate on in terms of a b testing and maximizing engagement and so on so there's there are a lot of possibilities in the future for this yeah cool but so what I, I hope I, yeah i'll be a part of it soon so <laughs> yeah and, and like what i would love to see happen especially for you uh, mm-hmm. is being able to leverage virtual design sprints so that you can expand your available pool of talent to work on something yeah. like the little app and exactly. really be yeah. able to have somebody test locally in say cordova or Berlin, or Taiwan, Mm -hmm. and seeing how the cultural nuances and differences of the locality would affect the interaction of what you're attempting to do. And it could give you a broader depth and and reach for where you want to take things, especially for teaching the value of art to to younger people. I think you have a lot of, it has a lot of potential, but I really would like to see where it goes. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot, Robert. You're welcome. I (laughs) I, I mean, that's, what what else is the point? If if it was just about making money and and having market share and everything else, it's been done. And I I could be like any other company. I'd much rather I'd much rather benefit have a community benefit, but really make an impact for people that care about what they do. I think it's yeah. probably a better way to, to 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 phrase it. I echo that. Yeah. So um, if people want to find you online, Melvin, where would they go? Where would they go online to find you? Yeah, I forgot to talk about another project. I'm working on my website you as well. You have another project? Yeah, <laughs> that's my website. <laughs> so, oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought there was like, oh, there's another app. Wait a minute. We, we don't, I got to do a reset, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah so uh, you can find me on melvintampi.com. And there you can see all my links there. Um, most probably I will update the website soon with all the uh, content there. You got two weeks. This podcast is coming out in two weeks. You got to update it soon. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> you know, designers, right? They never update their website. Well, it's, yeah. it's yeah, I, yeah, I'm victim to that too. I have a website <laughs> that is woefully outdated and I need to just go into Webflow and update it. So I know it's exactly what you mean. So I can't get on your yeah. case too much. Yeah. I'll do my best. But Melvin, I'm looking forward to working with you in the coming months. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. And thank like you. I said, we'll post everything that we're talking about in the show notes so people can access it. Thank you. All right, take care, Melvin. Bye-bye. Thanks again for listening to the Dallas Design Sprints podcast. If you have a question or comment about what you heard on today's show, email me direct at robert at dallasdesignsprints.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Just do a Google search for Robert Scrobe 
or ask a friend and see if they know. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time. Thank you.